This is a Lenovo ThinkPad L420 from 2011. At 14 years old, this chunky laptop really shows its age. And since it's currently running Windows 7, its usefulness in 2025 and beyond is getting worse by the day. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to save this machine from landfill? Upgrading the OS to Windows 11 is out of the question, and if you ask Microsoft, this is e-waste. But I don't think so. Join me in today's video as we find out how to give new life to your old laptop with modern Linux. I really love Windows 7, and it's sad to see it in a state where almost all modern apps don't support it, and security is an ever-increasing risk. This was a solid operating system when it came out in 2009, and I'm sure it served many of you well too. But times have changed, and if we want to keep this old ThinkPad up to date and modern, it's time for Linux. So what do we have to work with? Well, an old i5, 4GB of RAM, and currently an old spinning hard drive. It's not a requirement, but I'll be swapping the hard disk out with an SSD to improve the system's overall responsiveness. So, let's head onto the Linux Mint website and download a copy. I'm opting for the Mint Mate Edition. It's lighter on resources than the main version with the Cinnamon desktop environment, which is perfect for an old machine like this. Once the ISO finished downloading, I wrote the file to a blank USB stick using Belena Etcher. It's at this point where we say goodbye to Windows 7 and begin the SSD installation. How cool are these old machines? Swapping out the main drive was just a matter of removing a few screws. Once the back panel was off, I removed the SATA hard drive from its slot, then from its brackets, and I installed the SATA SSD in its place. After closing the laptop back up, it's time to boot from the USB stick. I never know which keys to mash on boot up to interrupt the normal startup and get to the boot menu, so I try things like F2, F8, F10, F12, and delete. You can google it for your specific device, or just try different keys until you get somewhere. Once the boot menu appears, we can select our USB stick which contains the Linux Mint installer. The Mint installer is really friendly. You're presented with a desktop environment so that you can test out your new OS before you install it. It also has a nice graphical installer, which we'll use now. Follow the prompts, and then we get to the point where it asks what we want to do with the system drive. I installed an SSD with unimportant data on it, so I was happy for the installer to erase it and use the entire drive. After continuing through the prompts, Mint was installed, and I rebooted the machine. After rebooting, that's us pretty much done. I customised the desktop theme a bit and installed a couple of programs. And now we can use a modern version of Firefox to visit a really cool website, PCBWay, this video sponsor. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for PCB prototyping, CNC machining, 3D printing, and more. Right now they're running a couple of really cool promos, including TPU FDM printing discounts for prints over 20 grams, with prints over 64 grams getting a massive 80% off. The second is PCBWay's design contest, which encourages makers to present their most creative ideas for the chance to win some awesome prizes. But a personal favourite? Purple solder masks. How beautiful is a purple PCB? It usually costs extra, so if you're into a vapour wavy purple feel, this is the one for you. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, check them out for your next project via the link in the description. Linux takes a little bit of getting used to if you're a new user coming from Windows, but unless you've got specific Windows apps that you absolutely have to run, it's such a good way to breathe new life into your old devices. It's also a great way to test out Linux before installing it on your main computer, using an old laptop that you don't mind experimenting with. The great thing about Linux on this ThinkPad is that all of the device drivers are pre-installed and work really well. It's not the fastest experience, and it would definitely benefit from a RAM upgrade, say, to 8GB. But the most important things, modern up-to-date software and solid security, are all there. I was quite happy using this to browse the web, watch YouTube, and chat via Discord. And it just goes to show that even a 14-year-old machine can still be useful. If you're interested in doing this with your old laptop, I've got lots of videos on my channel to support you through the process. If you've not done something like this before, I'd recommend watching the one where I talk about how to keep your files safe. There's a link in the pinned comment down below. But let me know what you think. Would you consider doing this with your old machine? Or have you tried it already? 
how did it go for you? Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.